In today's video, I'm comparing eight different budgeting apps so that you can stop putting off a budget just because you don't know which app to use. Let's get into it. The most popular video on this channel is the best budget apps video I made back in 2021. I compared every dollar, YNAB, and Mint. Today, we're adding five more to the mix. Good budget, fudget, monarch money, buddy, and Q. I'll break down the pros, cons, and cost of each app. Then I'll give you my opinion on which one I like the most, as well as what makes each app stand out among the rest. Let's start out with one of the big three, Every Dollar. The first app is Every Dollar. For the sake of transparency, Every Dollar is the app that my wife and I use on a daily basis, and we've used it for our now five years of marriage. It helped us remain consistent with our finances and save for large expenses, including a home down payment and a bunch of home repairs. We got an old house. So here's the pros of Every Dollar. Every Dollar is very simple and clean. It has budget categories already set up when you create an account. You can add or remove any budget lines that you want. You can create sinking funds to help you save for large purchases and create goals for those savings categories. And it'll give you a simple breakdown of your budgeting costs as well as what you've spent in the month already, as well as how much cash is remaining in each budget line. Plus it's easy to add transactions to keep up with your expense tracking. And they've got desktop access to your budget as well so that you can easily make changes on your computer. Now the cons. My biggest issue with every dollar is it doesn't give you a real time look into how much money you have during the month. For example, if you make a budget where you earn two paychecks of $1,500 each, then you have $3,000 to budget. The problem is you don't get all $3,000 at the beginning of the month. Thus, you can't just spend that three grand at the beginning of the month because you don't have it yet. So if you don't have a bunch of savings or extra cash, then you're going to have to prepare accordingly for large expenses. I also wish that you could backdate sinking funds. And at the end of the month, it'd be super helpful if every dollar had the ability to move money from budget line to budget line easily. As of right now, if you used only 300 of your $400 grocery budget, you have to change your grocery budget to $300 so that you can reallocate that extra $100. I just wish there was a tool where I could be like, just move this $100 over to savings or whatever. And here's the cost. Every dollar is automatically free, which is one of the biggest pros about this app. But if you want to go premium, you can actually connect to your bank account to your every dollar account so that each transaction gets added to the app. Then all you have to do is just drag and drop transactions into the right budget lines. Plus, it'll give you better insights into your spending, helping you save and pay off debt faster. Premium will cost you $10 a month or $100 annual. YNAB is another one of what I call the big three. It's got a huge and dedicated following and for good reason because they make a great app. Here's the pros. First, YNAB is incredibly powerful with a bunch of tools designed for budgeters who wanna control every aspect of their finances. You can connect all of your bank accounts to YNAB, making it easy to do expense tracking and track spending and net worth through their monthly reports. YNAB's tools are really expansive and directed towards the money nerds. Unlike every dollar, YNAB app has the ability to easily move money around at the end of the month. And it has a quick budget feature which allows you to adjust your budget lines based on your average spend in that category or what you spent last month or your average budget for that category. I like that feature because adjusting your budget is as important as budgeting in the first place. Of course, you can create savings goals and sinking funds for those large ticket items. And it's got a desktop app so you can still budget on your computer. And the cons. Now, while the app is fairly simple to use, the desktop app actually is a bit overwhelming because of all the tools and features that it has. It's great for nerds, but for someone who's just getting started in budgeting, it might be a little difficult to get used to. Overall though, the app is very easy to use, though it's kind of weird, you can't actually sign up for YNAB through the app. You have to do it online and then sign into your account in the app. Also, the expenses were easy to add, but the income was surprisingly difficult to figure out how to enter it. In YNAB's defense though, they have a ton of resources to help you get started with their service. Now the cost. YNAB doesn't have a free version, sad. It'll cost you $15 per month or $99 per year. They do have a 34 day free trial though so you can test it out and decide if that's right for you. The last of the big three is Mint and it's the most integrated app of all the apps when it comes to all aspects of your money. So here's the pros. Mint is made by Intuit so you can link up your TurboTax, Credit Karma, QuickBooks accounts all in one place. Plus you can connect your bank accounts, your investment accounts, real estate, loans, credit cards. It makes it much easier to track every aspect of your finances because everything's already in one place. I will say the bill calendar is really nice for keeping track of when different bills are due. And Mint does account for the fact that you don't get all paychecks at the beginning of the month. So you put in how much to budget for the month and then as you get each paycheck, then you record it and Mint adds it to the amount that's actually available to spend in the month. So it helps keep separate the amount that's budgeted and the amount that's actually available to spend. Mint also has a desktop version, which I like a lot. And you can create goals for your money, which I always think is a great feature. Now the cons. My biggest issue with Mint is the app is very busy. There's so much within the app between all the accounts that you can integrate, plus ads, blog posts, etc. It's just a 
bit overwhelming when you look at it because it's not as clean as some of the other apps. And it takes a bit more to set up your first budget because it doesn't have traditional line items already set up in the app. So you have to manually add each budget line. And here's the cost. The cost of Mint is free for the classic version. And that honestly gets you most of what you need. But Mint also offers an ad-free version for 99 cents per month and a premium version for $5 per month. That'll get you everything in the classic version, plus projected monthly spending, money growth potential, help managing subscriptions, and a couple other features. Our fourth budget app is Good Budget. Good Budget is a budgeting app that uses the envelope system in more of a digital format. That's what it calls its budget lines, envelopes. Here's the pros. Overall, Good Budget is very simple in its look. There's not much distracting in it, which I like. The simpler the budgeting app, the better because it minimizes complexity. The more complex a budgeting app is, I'm convinced makes it more difficult to keep up with your budget. Good Budget also makes it really easy to set up a budget on a different timeline. For example, most budgets have you budget on a monthly basis. That's how we budget, and personally, I think that makes the most sense because a lot of expenses happen only on a monthly basis and it's easier to keep track of expenses that way. But some people would prefer to budget every pay period. So every week, every two weeks, twice a month. And Good Budget allows you to do that and allows you to choose which day of the month to start your budget. I'll never use this feature personally, but I can see why some people might. For the record, it's also relatively easy to add income and expenses. Also, Good Budget has a budget bootcamp on their website to help you with using their platform. And you can access your account with an online version of their budget. Reflection off the floor is kind of distracting. Too much sun, but now we got it fixed. And the cons. I'm gonna say right now, I think Good Budget is the most confusing of the apps that I've reviewed. I think it's because it's more of a rolling budget instead of a normal budget with a monthly budget cycle. So just think of it more as a bunch of envelopes that you just keep putting money into whenever you get a paycheck. And then you pull money out of each of these envelopes to take care of expenses. It's a rolling budget so you don't reset the budget every month. You just adjust how much you put into each envelope from each paycheck based on what expenses are coming up in that pay period. Effectively, each envelope is its own sinking fund. Now I put this into a con because my brain isn't used to thinking of a budget this way. But you may find it easier to create a budget and stick to it because of how good budget is set up. And it's clearly loved by a lot of people because it's got a 4.7 star average on the app store from 13,000 reviews. Just keep in mind your view of good budget may depend on how you look at money. And now the cost. When it comes to cost, good budget does have a free version. It only comes with 10 envelopes though, which is not enough for the normal person. It does also have 10 annual envelopes though, which are used for larger expenses that happen infrequently. But my wife and I use 40 plus budget lines, so this would never work for us. Having said that, you can pay for the premium version for $8 per month or $70 for the year. That kicks you up to unlimited envelopes. It boosts you from a one year budget history to seven years and gets you email support with Good Budget's team if you need. Number five, Fudget. Fudget is by far the simplest app of them all, both in look and in tools. It was made by a guy that just wanted something simpler to use, so he just coded it himself. And here's the pros. The main benefit is that the app is so simple that someone who isn't technologically savvy or even financially savvy can easily set up their own budget. It also makes it easy for going month to month and creating budgets because all you have to do is star the budget lines that you'll use on a regular basis and it'll carry it into the next month's budget. And it makes marking expenses as paid very easy because all you have to do is swipe and mark it as paid. Also, you can get it as a desktop version by requesting a link through their app. Now the cons. While I love the simplicity, you're gonna lose some of the tools that would be nice to use. The biggest feature that Fudget is missing is the ability to enter individual transactions. So when it comes to groceries, your budget is a certain amount, say $400. And then every time you get groceries, you spend $100. In any other app, you would add that $100 to the grocery line item, and then it would show that you had $300 remaining. Well, it doesn't have that ability, which is a bit weird. You can only put in the $400 line for groceries, but you can't open up that $400 grocery line and put in an individual $100 transaction. Ultimately, I think Fudget is good for someone who does a hybrid form of budgeting. Since it's great for single expenses, you can budget things like car insurance or your mortgage very easily. Then track when that expense gets paid. Then with things like groceries, restaurants, and fuel, where you have multiple transactions fitting into a single line, you could take the cash out of the bank, put it in envelopes, and just use the cash to pay for those expenses. It's a bit manual intensive, but very doable. And the cost. Fudget is free from either app store. They do have a pro version though, which I did upgrade to for $4 flat. This gives you the ability to save your budget to Dropbox and then restore it from another device. It allows you to sort entries, choose different themes, export a budget as a CSV and do it all ad free. I do like that it's a flat $4, no monthly fee. Our sixth budget app is Monarch Money. Here's the pros. Monarch Money is a budgeting app that provides something that no other budgeting app that I've reviewed actually offers, and that's automation. When it comes to budgeting, I think that automating as much as possible is important because that reduces the amount of workload that you have and makes it easier to keep up with the budget. The first thing I like about Monarch is it gives you a checklist and walks you through exactly how to set up your first budget using their platform. 
platform. That makes starting budgeting much easier if you've never done it before. But the biggest thing that sets apart Monarch from other apps is that once you get your bank accounts connected to Monarch, it'll actually analyze your expenses and income and create your first budget for you. It'll take your gas station purchases and put them together and create a budget for your gas money, which it thinks makes sense based on your expenses. With each transaction, it'll take that transaction and put it into a category that it thinks it should be in. All you have to do is make some modifications to your budget and check it regularly so that you know where you're at with your money. Monarch also provides a desktop version of the app so that you can access your budget online. It helps you analyze your spending and saving habits and helps you reach your financial goals. Now the cons. Something to keep in mind is that this app is not perfect at automation, not by any stretch of the imagination. It doesn't get categories right on all the expenses, so you do have to go through and correct some of them. King's Mills, that's actually a restaurant that we went to, and for some reason it's showing it as a transfer. So what I'm gonna do is go in here and change it to a restaurant. But after a month or two of correcting some expenses to the right categories, it'll automatically do those correctly in the future. And as time progresses, it'll get easier and easier because Monarch will learn what expenses go into what categories based on your normal budget. And the cost. Monarch comes in a couple versions, free and paid. Free is more limited in its tools. Like you can only have two bank accounts connected to Monarch. The paid version comes at a cost of $10 per month or $90 for the year. It makes all the features unlimited for you and allows you to roll over your budget from month to month. And it can connect things like real estate and other investments within your account. Best part is you can get a seven day free trial without using your credit card or your debit card to sign up, which means you can test it out and see if you would use the paid features. Number seven, Buddy. Buddy is honestly one of my favorite apps. I compare it in many ways to every dollar because its interface is very clean and simple to use. Here's the pros. Like I said, Buddy is clean. I can't say this enough, but if you have a good app that isn't set up in a confusing way and doesn't have a bunch of buttons or features that are distracting, that's really gonna help you simplify your budget. With Buddy, it's easy to set up your first budget and track your expenses. Now the cons. This is one of the only apps in the group that doesn't allow you to connect your bank account to the app. So the transactions can automatically show up in the app without you manually entering them. It's not a big deal overall for someone like me, but if you're someone that likes the convenience of having your bank account connected to your budget app, then you won't like this. Also, I think this is the first app that doesn't have access to a desktop version of it. So you're gonna be stuck to the phone for this one. And here's the cost. Buddy has a basic version, but it's very limited. As in you can create your budget and you can create transactions. Actions. The paid version, however, allows you to create multiple budgets, customize categories, share budgets with family, create debt accounts, and more. Fortunately, it comes at a fairly reasonable cost. Right now, it's on sale for $5 per month or $17 per year or a $60 one-time fee for unlimited access. The last budget app I'm reviewing today is Cube Money. This is one of the most unique budget apps because it is its own bank account. The pros. While other budget apps connect to bank accounts, Cube is a bank account. It's cool because it actually forces you to be more proactive with your budget because the budget actually dictates how the bank account operates. Basically, Cube uses the envelope system but turns it digital. You create their version of envelopes, which are called cubes, and then allocate money from your income into different cubes like groceries, restaurants, and gasoline. Each transaction actually gets assigned to a cube because if it doesn't, your cube debit card will actually get declined after a certain amount of spending without allocating transactions to cubes. It sounds crazy because honestly, it is. But this is an app and bank account designed for people who want to be intentional with their money and use a system of budgeting the envelope system which has worked for decades upon decades upon decades but in a more modern digitalized version i can say from my test of cube it's quite innovative i'm impressed with the tools and the overall setup and it has desktop access if you like doing your budget on the computer now the cons cube does take some getting used to it's far far more restrictive than other budgeting apps to some people that would be a con it requires far more intentionality behind your money because you literally have to allocate every transaction to a cube otherwise your debit card will get declined past a maximum spend having said that it is restrictive, but if you're serious about turning your money habits upside down, this is for you. And the cost. Cube has a free version, which I signed up for. It's great for people who want to test out Cube, but I wouldn't recommend using it long term. I'd recommend upgrading to their premium version for $8 per month, which gets you unlimited cubes, monthly reports, a joint account, and faster deposits. Or you can upgrade to a family plan for $15 per month, and that'll get you up to 10 authorized users with a lot of parental and kids features. Wow, that was a lot of options if you're in the market for a budget app. Overall, my favorite app to 
this day is every dollar. To be fair, my wife and I have used it for years, so there's probably some bias there. It's simple and clean and has the option to connect bank accounts with a subscription. The cons don't honestly affect this enough to make a difference. Having said that, I think the rest of the apps will be best for different people. YNAB I think has the best tools for budgeting. Mint has the best integration among financial accounts and services. Good budget is best for non-monthly budgeters as well as just keeping track of how much money you have in different envelopes. Budget is best for those looking for a simple budget, especially those who want to do a hybrid model with the envelope system. Monarch Money is best for those who'd like to automate their budget as much as possible. Buddy is best for people looking for a clean app with good budgeting resources, some additionally great tools at a reasonable price, and they're okay without connected accounts. And Cube is best for people looking to completely flip their finances upside down in order to change their money habits for good. Now, if you'd like to see the in-depth review of each of these, then check out this playlist right here or look at the links in the description down below. And if you're looking for good cashback debit cards, then check out this cashback debit card showdown right here.